again, go ahead and, and read this problem. And um, set up a box for yourself. And knowing that you've got speed and time involved here, you've got this table with distance equals rate times time. It's going to take a small jet four hours less time than a propeller-driven plane. So I'd like to always first come here and describe my two um, situations. I've got a jet and I've got a propeller-driven plane. The jet's going to take four hours less time than the pro propeller-driven plane. So what do you say we let this be T for the propeller-driven plane, and then we let the time for the jet to be four hours less than that one? Um, you could do it. You could let this be T and this be T plus four if you'd like, because the prop plane is slower. So, you know, you, it doesn't really matter which way you do it. I just chose to let the propeller plane be T because we described the jet in terms of the propeller plane. Um, they're traveling from Glen Rock to Oakville, and that means they're both going the same place. So, their distances are the same. Remember, you're looking for two letters in this situation, even though the, the final question is, how far is it from Glen Rock to Oakville? So ultimately, I want to know what the distance is, but I might solve for T first and then plug that back into one of the original equations to find out what D is. The jet averages a rate of 637. This column is not a difficult one for this problem. It is more difficult when there's wind and currents and planes and boats. Um, but this one, they just downright tell you what the speeds are of these two particular vehicles, uh, the jet plane and the propeller plane. And now I'm going to write my two equations. The first one is D equals 637 times T minus 4. So D equals 637 times T minus 4. And right here, D equals 273 times T. This one is just, um, again, very easily done by substitution. Um, the, uh, I better grab, I think I've done some of this multiplication. Uh, this equation would become 637t minus um, 2548. And then I just need to set this equal to this because they both are representative of the, the variable d. So I have um, 637t minus 2548 equals 273t. And I'm just going to go ahead and tell you that when you subtract 637t from both sides and then divide by whatever that coefficient is, you're going to find out that time is 7 hours. Now please remember that's for this plane. It takes 7 hours. Therefore, this plane takes 3 hours because 7 minus 4 is 3. What we really need to know, though, is how far the plane travels. So if T is 7, then D, the easiest place to put it, is 273 kilometers per hour times uh, 7 hours. You could do it in the first equation as well. I'm just going to do it in this equation. And I've got that the distance turns out to be 1,911 miles. Again, you should check it in the other equation. You should check it up here with T being 7 and see if you get 1,911 miles as well. Then you can be guaranteed that you've done well. The motion problems are not as bad as you might think. The table is really imperative, and it's really important that you describe the rows as well. And then know that you're going to have two variables in these problems, and you're going to have something that they give you that is rock solid, gets to go in a particular category. And then just write your two equations from these two rows. I hope you do well with those. It's probably the most challenging thing you have left yet to accomplish as the semester closes.